Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm here talking with with Oscar. Hey, how's it going? Good. Hi, hi Chris. How are you? So people that don't know you, who you are, where you are, what you do, why don't you give us your background? Who are you? Absolutely. First of all, I'll give you my background on where I'm at. That's yeah. in Tiwa, Guatemala. So that's, that's an old city. It's a 500-year old city. Uh, we're located in Guatemala uh, in Central America, uh, and we got two cities. Uh, we got uh, Guatemala City, which is a capital. That's where I'm at, and that's where I'm based out. And then in Tiwa, Guatemala, which is our iconic, and that's why I use it there, iconic uh, sites. Uh, yeah, um, a little bit of my background, I guess, Chris, if you, if, if you want me to, to share a little bit there. Yeah, yeah please. Um, so I've been in, in technology for a long, long time. Uh, kind of like give you uh, more of my background comes to my mother, really. Uh, you know that back in the 70s, being a woman, uh, leading technology or leading, uh, you know, any, any corporations or companies or enterprise within, I would say, Mexico down to all Latin America, to be honest, and everybody can tell about that. So I'm not, I'm not saying being discriminated about anything. It was a tough, it was a tough world, especially for a woman, right? She was 23rd at the time when she has me, uh, she had me and um, that was 72. And then at 73, she was the first uh, uh, really outsourcer back then. She really started to do outsourcing and or manufacturing and whatnot. Back in 79, 80, she get involved on actually doing an assembly line for quartz and watches. I don't know if you remember mm. those. Yeah, of so course. That was, that was quite, uh, you know, it's like the, at that time, it was like the Apple watch of today's, right? It's like the yep. band, the Microsoft band of today's. It was, it was really, really the thing. And she assembled some of the parts of the Atari back then. Uh, so the fact that she wanted to have more impact into the, uh, into the world technology. So since there, you know, my, my Atari back then was made in Guatemala, unfortunately. You never know how the future will turn out. Uh, somehow we give that away as a charity or something, right? But uh, she stayed from there for, for, for quite some time. And she's been in our service for quite some time. Then back in the 90s, she, she got back to, you know, manufacturing of clothing. But she was also interested in on technology. So I started to, to work with technology as well with them. On 87, I started, I think it was Commodore 65, 64 at that time that I worked with it. A little bit, really. And uh, my cousin, she... Uh, she used to have, um, she's a, a software engineer and actually lives in the UK, but she introduced me to technology in that way, you know, the code and thing, the, 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 the bolts, bolts and neats of the things there. And so it was, it was kind of cool, right? You know, you'd be hiding there in the dungeon and whatnot. It was very, very fun. So my mother, uh, really back in the 90s, she started, you know, uh, backing into the clothing and she was very interested in technology. So I was parked with her on their enterprise she was doing, but she really injected technology. So far to the fact that on uh, 95, uh, we were the 42nd internet user in, in our community, which it was wow. no internet whatsoever in Central America. We're talking right now, 25 years, 25 years. Yeah. Back then we also put our first, um, I would say dedicated line, uh, clear channel, 32K. <laughs> it was nothing, <laughs> yeah. but a little bit gets on email. And um, so after we did that, I really, you know, we started to use technology like scanning and getting documents to us. We save a lot of money doing that, writing the DHL, traditional DHL, things moving out there. Mm -hmm. As uh, things were progressing back in 2007, I was like a little bit tired of it. That was because Guatemala really wasn't for me at the time. I was like, you know, not, not Guatemala, but the environment. But then back then, actually a, a Utah company uh, came to Guatemala. It was ACS, Affiliated Computer Services. Uh, and it was a first information technology outsource at the time. I was elite there. Uh, I was I I, I caught myself a salary there because I I did see the quality of engineers that we have, but that didn't see you know the overall the, the appreciation from the at the time uh, from the managers where they see I you know just a programmer and the code is right there. But ACS was different, so I decided to move with a less salary back there with the intention really to gather all this talent. And we proved to the world, to a fact that in computer world, back in 2007, 2008, that they were saying that affiliated computer services was delivering IT from Guatemala. And that was my operations back there. Oh, wow. Then, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was an amazing feeling. Then uh, Xerox bought us, which is one of the biggest 
dots in the United States or acquisitions in the United States back then. Yep. And I was part of the of, of those services. By 2000, I will say 2012, from around there, we're about 200 people, which it was a lot of engineers. And then um, uh, we we move into a, a you know a larger model. I was an operation of 500 people. And the good thing about it, the objective of all this, why I'm sharing this is not because of me, it's because I can tell you that, uh, you know, we put our hands and everybody's like, what do you do besides that? We got a lot of platforms nowadays because people came from, from these companies, but also we got great talent. And, you know, this is what we are. And it's what, what are the finest targets of, or, or I will say the, uh, the niche or laser focused targets that you need to have out there now in technology worlds is where do I find the talent, right? And what Amal has been, I wouldn't be able to actually go out there to the United States to sell, you know, we get talent here if I don't have it because you have to have the quality. So back in 2016, we become the exporter of the year because of, you know, things that we couldn't do. I was leading that, so I became the exporter of the year. Not the national exporter, I get second. And the reason for it is because I couldn't show my operations due to restrictions. We are very, very abided by the law and there were restrictions on the contracts and we couldn't show any of the operations. So we had to kind of tweak it what we did and really couldn't sell that much. Uh, so, so we did that. And then of course this was international money. And then I moved into, you know, as a CTO, as Ally Global and where I'm right now working. And uh, what, what we do here is we're supporting technology to, anywhere we're we're about to open in the uk we got philippines we serve the united states as it is right now and um and, and with that uh, you know one of the things that i've been participated as well is in education and i want to take this opportunity to share a little bit about this chris because i think it's important sure. education has not been a place where it's been sexy because you don't get revenue right where the sexy is the revenue sometimes uh, but I do participate with it because what I think is, is the future of technology is that we as techno technocrats or engineers, we spend the time at least a little bit to transfer those 25 years in my experience that I have to the new generations of IT. So we don't get you know, four steps back, but actually four steps forward. And uh, we participate in that because the sourcing for me is super important. So I participate in all the universities with Ally Global, where I teach in all of them, by the way. And also, uh, I've been, you know, as a Microsoft regional director, which has been, and I think you, you have seen that this is more than a name, really, because it really opens, you know, the, the kind of, of, of conference that we have, like with you, this, this talk with you, the talk with other RDs and uh, with other, you know, members and, and, and the international presence that we have. It really is strategic. And with that, I, I was been able to participate in, almost every single association that talks technology here. Uh, pr currently, I'm president of the, techno of the uh, com technology committee of the American Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I also participate in the uh, National Management Association uh, in the digital part. I'm the leader of that. I was uh, president of the Software Export Association with Ahexport, where I was, I was uh, the export of the year. And uh, I have been participated as well with uh, you know, the, the service association, Basically, everything that has to do with the knowledge has been there. And it's a great feeling because uh, having this channel with guys like you, where we can freely talk about this, it gives, me, it gives me the opportunity to actually show my country where we not only have the talent just you know, begging for, for jobs sometimes because life is life. So it's nothing wrong with saying, if I have a need, I'm raising my hand, dude, I'm going to do something because I need to be, you know, I need to, to feed my family. That's very honorable. And I, and, I, and I respect that very much. But we're in the next step, which I'm very happy about it. We're in the step where it's a, it's a matter of finding Guatemala in a way that we have a, a network of engineers that are really delivering, right? Mm -hmm. We got Telos International, we got Xerox, we got, of course, us. We are, we are delivering. We are in the next level. We are... We are high tech, which is a very exciting moment in life for me and, and for our country, because not only I can share this with you here, but it gives me aspects from the political perspective, from the, you know, just technology perspective and revenue, but also the, the educational part of it, which is a great feeling when you're working with young people, because they bring that, that life 
into you and that life can be brought up into other places. So, you know, it's something that's been discussed uh, in uh, political discussions. Uh, you know, if it, it seems like it's, you know, the four year, the presidential cycle where the topic mm -hmm. comes up. But I noticed that the last two presidential elections here in the U.S., the uh, the whole discussion point of uh, of like these uh, of these work zones uh, again the southern border of the United States, but working with um, Central America and South America and and you know not just Mexico sharing the border, but setting up this this opportunity zone, uh, this area where uh, you know to improve the commerce, to improve the especially in the in the technology and manufacturing sectors, um, the, the flow of, of goods and commerce uh, with the US and Canada and Central and South America. And, and then it just seems to, that topic, that discussion just seems to go away. And I don't know, what, you know what's changed at all. It just, it, and, and I, I look, I, admittedly, I'm naive on a lot of the, the political discussions that are happening with with Guatemala, certainly, but uh, with Central and South America on this this topic. But, you know, rather than sending business uh, halfway around the world and to, uh, you know, the opposite time zone, uh, as we do with China and even India and, mm -hmm. uh, and and these other locations, and why couldn't we, you know, work out and, and set up help uh, some of these regions that may not have the infrastructure. Like, I don't know what the infrastructure is like in Guatemala, like, uh, you know, to be able to set up factories or to, to set up and have, you know, the travel, uh, you know, in, in the same way and what those costs would look like. It's not just about, you know, having a, a, a high tech facility and good mm -hmm. internet connectivity. It's all of the other supporting, you know, uh, secondary tertiary uh, support, the, the, all of the other companies around that. But it seems like that would be a good long-term investment, certainly from a U.S. perspective, um, to but to strengthen strengthen the infrastructure of some of these areas and have more business that is an hour or two difference of a time zone away for the U.S. rather than you know ten to twelve hours away. Um, and I'm telling you uh, on that in that regards, several things there. First of all, we are. Our partner is the United States. We are bonding to the United States, which is great because, you know, you feel like you're home. What you what you want to do is that they don't have to leave home here because they can serve the U.S. from here, which is a benefit for everyone. In terms of the time zone, you know, we have our, our folks working in the Eastern or West time. So there is folks that works here at 6 a.m. in the morning. They're like, why are you going to be here so early? Well, when you when you Chime in and, and put them in the equation, the time that it takes you to get to work. And now with the COVID, which we went completely remote, and I'm, tell, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that, how do we are distributed with technology. You get those people who says, you know what, I work, I, I'll wake up at 5.15, which you still have to do it when I've gotta go at 8 a.m. in the morning. And then I take, I take you know, my, my, my breakfast and whatever, 6 a.m. and online. And they, the connectivity is good because we have we move within two weeks all the operation when everybody was declared a pandemic and we have to distribute it due to, to, to restrictions and lockdown, we were still full operational. And that's all like global. And that was I was we had a case study about this. I can share that with you if it's something that we'll do, where we got everybody sent out. Technology, call center, everything that we do immediately. We couldn't do that if we don't have the infrastructure to actually do it. And in terms of the technology from the technology folks, the 6 a.m. is really great. They beat up the traffic, they're gonna be fresh, and at 3 p.m. they can leave home, right? Or they leave you know, their office, which is their home, without traveling, and everybody's happy because the folks in the U.S., right? Technologies in the U.S., lead engineers, software architects, they pick up the phone and the engineers write there fresh, right? Which is a, it's a huge difference. I've been working you know, with the, the, the different difficult time zones, and there is no, we got the best coffee in the world, but I'm telling you something. <laughs> there is not enough coffee at 4 a.m. in the morning <laughs> to keep you awake. Yeah. It's, it's too difficult. I, I, I've been trying to do so, but it's way too difficult. So that's in on the West side, right? When you get at 10 a.m. in the morning and leave at 7, you can go to a workout. You beat up the 9 o'clock or I would say 8 o'clock traffic. Mm -hmm. And then you beat up the 6 o'clock traffic, which yeah. is a win-win situation for everyone. 
so it's been it's been a great journey honestly and i think you know as we th- we, we, sp- we make more of a technology and discover what i'm on that matter, which you know i can share a lot of that with you is that we get not only in the central everybody who said well all the engineers are right there in the capital well guess not we got engineers that actually work in different areas because as long as they have a, a thread that they can go there and connect to the internet, that's good with me. Good. Hey, one thing I'm going to ask you. Um, so I know that there's been, as you're probably aware, you know, on the uh, RD threads, uh, there's been a lot of discussion since we just had uh, the, the, you know, it's a, it's a two year term for, for RD. So I just got renewed. Uh, were you it on just, this renewal? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I was. Yeah. All right. mm-hmm. So, and so what's typical now, and I saw this two years ago, is all the, the, the new uh, RDs that are coming in, there's, I don't know what the total number is. It was like 175 yeah, it was last a lot, cycle. Yeah. And uh-huh. so I, they were still under 200, uh, uh-huh. you know, right around there. Um, and it's very different than the MVP, MVP program. Yep. Um, but there's been a lot of emails on, for the benefit of those that are new of, uh, you know, what it means to be an RD. I'd love to hear your perspective on what it means to be an RD and how you've been able to uh, leverage that, the, the, you know, that status with, with Microsoft and, and doors that it's opened. Or, I don't know, just tell me kind of your, you know, your sure. reflections on the program. Absolutely. I, I think uh, uh, the, the name original director means a lot. But I'm, 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 what I feel about it is that is, is really, we're a global ambassadors of this strategic thinking of technology. That's, that's how I feel about it. Because really the, the, the level of discussions that we get into it and the, you know, the well thought, you, you, don't, you don't just reply, you know, just to be heard. You reply because there is meaning into what you reply. And the rest of the folks do this as well. So um, when, you, when you have that one, what it means is, that intercultural and strategic thinking, of, you know, across is just different, uh, completely a, a, another view and, uh, and, and provides more uh, what's value in terms of how do we use technology for the better, for the better good for all the world. I think it froze you for a second there. Oh, you're out here. No, there we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, I've had two experiences. Um, where I, I've reached out and I, where I've kind of leveraged the, the RD status. And I, I had, um, so both of these times, the executives who responded and said, um, you know, the fact there was an RD asking for this help and asking this question, it says, I, you know, cut through the, the clutter. And it was great to hear that, that the both executives, you know, very specifically said, like, basically I took your phone call because you're an RD and yes, this was very important. And then they participated in those activities. It was, it's great to, to have that, that kind of access. And in both cases was able to do something for the community and get a kind of a higher profile uh, of Microsoft's involvement. You know, it was, it wasn't just like, Hey, somebody from the community coming and saying, Hey, Microsoft come and sponsor something, you know, send some funds or some swag our way for, for an event. Now, this was a uh, much more strategic, like in my region, although I agree with the regional director has nothing to do with a physical geography, a region, you know, per se. Um, but I was able to uh, highlight to bring to Microsoft's uh, attention, the, the need for building the Microsoft brand within a specific region. And, uh, and they were responded. And so that has been you know, that having that level of, of access and having that, that response uh, has been incredible. Have you been able to see any of that, like specifically talking about, you know, Guatemala and, and the business that you're trying to do? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Because when, when, when you out there, right, there, 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 there's a brand of respect and they, you know, how do, how do Microsoft can help us? And you can, you can really, you know, cover that bridge and, and you, you meet those friend it meets, you know what I mean? That's where you connect those, 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 those cables and you can see and provide bi directional information about products and, and all the fields and, you know, it's, it's really a communication channel and ambassadors as I said, where you can 
both ways and is very, very valuable. I, I, I couldn't enjoy it anymore, to be honest with you. Executive levels, uh, even, you know, I, I've been working with the major of the city. It, it's just, it's just, um, it's just different. It's, and, and you can provide value to them as well. They can provide value to you so you can bring it up, you know, to the next level of technology. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and there's, so there's, uh, maybe this is the, the, the last question. I'll let you expand on this one. But uh, so I like in your profile, your, uh, your RD profile, um, this is like the, uh, the, the definite renaissance man uh, definition. You said father, husband, tennis player, carpenter, and opera singer. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, like a too much into the mix there, right? <laughs> I I like that combo. Yeah, that's a. You, you had to tell me about it. Say, well, first, what kind of carpentry? Like, what what's your area of oh, expertise? Uh, I will say intermediate to advanced, so of speaking, because I just I saw the pictures. I just finished uh, the big TV set where I got the, the free there, you know, for cooler, and you know where you your your game uh, uh, that the xbox and whatnot then you picture that major uh, the, the bedroom for my kids so i will say intermediate to advance that's for sure and then as far as the uh the opera singer background like is it you have a passion yeah, for opera singing or did you find your you find your way into opera Might have might have lost him. I, I think it's my connection. I'm sorry about that. So yes, I would say advanced to I, I was an intermediate to advanced. Excellent. I mean, did you anything that you specifically enjoy building, like uh, like furniture versus, you know, general construction or? I do decks. Actually, my deck in the back there, I did oh. it myself. So I. Got the fine, the fine woodworking as well as the rough one. <laughs> Very nice. And then, and then how did you find your way into opera singing? All right. Yeah. So let me. So I decided to, uh, I decided to go back when I was like 27 to my opera singing, and it turned out it was great. So I was able to be in public uh, uh, presentations. Uh, three times already, it's difficult to get there. It's not an easy one. And, uh, and uh, like three recitals, so one I did it myself, a couple that were public, so it was pretty cool. Oh, wow. Well, so Oscar, I know we're, we're at the uh, top of the hour here, but if people wanna get in touch with you, find out more about you, what are the best ways to reach you? LinkedIn will be great. You know, you, get, uh, you can find me out on LinkedIn. If you, think, if you look for Oscar Garcia, uh, Oscar Garcia column, there at the internet, you will find me there, right? Uh, but also you can have me at my uh, uh, Twitter account, uh, which is at ALM Latam. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for your time today. And uh, sorry, we had a, a little bit of sound issues like towards the end, but the most of it was came through great, but uh, really appreciate your time. And hopefully we'll, uh, I know that the MVP and RD summits are, are going to be digital again, but Hopefully one of these days we'll be able to uh, meet up in person and and uh, have have another conversation. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, I missed you. Yes, but uh, for sure, yeah, I'm looking forward and you know to have the personal experience because it's the networking is is unfortunately shaking hands that nowadays looks like you know it's prohibited, but it's yeah. it's just what brings you know brings humanity to to a close. Yeah, really, definitely. Well, thanks a lot for your time. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Chris. Nice talking Bye. to you. Bye-bye.